Pisces, welcome to your end of January 2022 general tarot update. It's Rena here. I just started, uh, I said, okay, which sign am I going to do? Okay, I'll do Pisces. And I just started laying out the card and I'm like, wait, I haven't even pressed the record button. And boy, wouldn't have that been impressive if I would have, because I could say, oh, this is perfect for Pisces, the high priestess, something psychic. And now you might think that I chose that intentionally. Hard to lift these. Cards are not glossy. I'm just putting that there, but then I'm going to actually pick this one. Okay. Okay, let's see what's going on here. The heart of the matter is the High Priestess, which is a card of, you know, connecting with your higher self, intuition. Um, sometimes, like the Moon card, this can be that all the information is not um, being given on the conscious level, that there's still some things, and you might have to use your intuition to fill in the blanks if there's some something going on. But it's, um, I think, unlike the moon card, I think that this has an even more spiritual connection where it's like, no matter what's happening, like, let's say, I'm, I'm not saying this is true for you, but let's say you suspect that your partner is cheating and you just feel like there's a strange behavior coming from this person. The moon card could be like, oh man, I don't understand what's happening. Um, everything is so confusing to me. I think that person is deceiving me. And it's like confusion. Those are the kind of buzzwords of the moon card. You're emotional. The moon is emotional. The high priestess is going to be, I would say like philosophical, but it's 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 more than that in a way. It's not just uh, trying to make a situation okay it's knowing that you're always connected to god and that it's all good and um that everything else is a plus you know you don't have to um you don't feel like you're missing out on anything and people who get into that zone the people that are really in that deep communion with God, they can still have relationships with people in the world, but it's just not the same. They don't have the same, uh, I was going to say worldly emotions, but it's, it's really the ego, the, the, the small self that gets offended and that feels like it's not being honored enough or fulfilled. Those things are just not what that person is all about. And if you feel that you are that way, I think that's okay. I don't think that that is unusual for the average person. It's just that um, you tend to be a very psychic person as it is, and Neptune is in your sign, so it's kind of enhancing that. And the more that you can tune in or <laughs> tune in, turn on, turn up, <laughs> tune in, turn on, drop out. <laughs> I'm just channeling Timothy Leary. Now, um, the more that you can um, be more um, like be still and know, and you're not, you're not concerned about worldly opinions. You just want that direct connection to your higher self, the more that I think you're going to be um, free. And anything that you do, and this can involve work matters or anything, it's not going to 
grab your your attention to the point where um, you get riled up, you can't think of anything else, and those kinds of things. In the past position, yeah, this is funny because I think this is connected to your ruler Neptune. You have the Seven of Cups, and this may be that sense of, uh, yeah, you know, what do I do? Um, feeling like, you know, this can be a card of wishful thinking, like wanting something to be true, but maybe it's not. It doesn't matter if it's true or if it's not, because ultimately you hold the key. You have the power. Um, I think a lot of those things, if this is relationship related, is because... Um, one person is, the person who is feeling rejected in the relationship is taking it personally, is thinking that there's something wrong with them instead of maybe there's something wrong with the other person. Maybe that other person is going through some kind of uh, difficult situation and they just can't focus on a day-to-day -day relationship. They're just too... They're running away from life. Um, the Seven of Cups can be about addiction and those avoidance patterns. Um, so, But it, I'm not saying this is necessarily you. It just might be something that you're dealing with. And maybe you, you sense that this is true, but you don't know um, all the details. Because if this is like, for instance, let's say this is a person that you are interested in. And you feel like there's something there, but the other person is not seeming to like respond to your texts or what have you. They could be going through their own issues that are making them scattered and they can't really do it, but that could be creating you, you being scattered. Because the Seven of Cups can be you kind of all over the place emotionally and then I got as a higher message a card in the reverse position this is the ace of cups reversed now the the spiritual message I tend to read symbolically rather than literally but anyway um in the upright position if I were reading it literally it would mean a new relationship a new love coming into your life in the reversed position, um, maybe you had, had hopes for it, but it's not happening. Well, um, as a higher message, it might be, this is not meant for you. And it's possible that you misinterpreted it. And that's what the seven of cups is all about that you kind of had your wires crossed and you didn't uh, maybe you wanted something to be true that simply wasn't true and now you have to just kind of deal with that reality what crosses you is the four of swords this is a card of rejuvenation rest um, maybe some reflection time. I love that, like, third eye radiating from the lamb. And, uh, you know, swords connect with thoughts. And the number four is a number that is associated with Saturn. And to me, it's like getting your head together, getting your thoughts together. And the seven of cups is kind of being scattered emotionally. So maybe you need to really um, recharge your batteries. But with the High Priestess, you might be going on a spiritual retreat. And that could be very good for someone who has been through some kind of emotional roller coaster. What is coming in is the Eight of Swords. This is, to me, like shadow work. Looking at, maybe the in the reverse position, it would be more like shadow work. But it's really about, uh, to me, looking at the things, the thoughts that you think. 
that stand in the way of you making positive changes in your life or, you know, taking positive action. And usually this will involve feeling like you can't do something, that you're not worthy, and those things definitely have to be rooted out. And then we have another eight, and this is the number, this is eight of wands, and this is um, things just, see that, that lightning bolt, it's like, uh, it's like a, a, a switch gets flipped, and then all of a sudden you're activated. Maybe that's the new moon in Pisces. And you're raring to go. You're ready to do what you got to do. Uh, maybe you have a whole bunch of different job offers coming to you. Uh, maybe relationship. I mean, not, well, I wouldn't say relationship, but new potential uh, love matches coming into your life. All because... You were willing to change the way you think. So that is very exciting that we have the ability to have any uh, impact on that. So I hope that you enjoyed this Pisces. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care.